this this is the second video attached to the October 29th remote session. Um, in these, we are learning all about network data sets and network analytics, uh, which really let you take any network of lines. You know, they're commonly used with roads, and that's where we'll learn them. But anything that has connectivity that you can think of, right? Uh, you know, transit lines, rivers and, and waterways, uh, social network, right? Anything where there's connectivity between various nodes and points, you can actually use that and model how things travel along it. So really what this is used is for when we're measuring distances and finding out how to get from point A to point B is no longer doing what we did with buffers or nears, right? Where we just sort of treat everything like it's a straight line, but rather use an underlying network to move through space. Um, this video, as I said, you know, in the last one, is teaching how to build what we're going to call the rules of the road, a network data set in Arc Desktop. It's the only time all year we're going to be in desktop, and I will duplicate everything I'm about to do here in Pro as well. I just find the way to do this in desktop a little cleaner and a little easier when you're learning it. Um, but, you know, that said, if you have no care, obviously, to be in desktop, you can just pop to the next video which will emulate this process in pro, um, you know, and even though I'll reference this video occasionally, you should be able to follow. So when I say rules of the road, you know, what I mean is that we actually need to understand the structure of the underlying data set. And, you know, this is a tip I've always given you guys is that when you get new data, you should look at its attribute table, um, right? Same way we do it as in pro, just right click Memphis roads. You'll see open attribute table. There it is, good old attribute table, you know, just as clumsy and just as silly looking. And, you know, I always tell you guys, figure out before you work with any piece of data, what do the rows mean? And the rows mean the road segments. How do I know that? Well, if I take my selection and maybe just start selecting pieces on the map, I can see that I'm not selecting the entire roads. I'm almost just selecting the pieces of roads that are between various nodes. You know, I'm selecting the blocks, so to speak. And, you know, the neat thing about that is if I'm if I'm doing that, uh oh, where'd my attribute table go? There we go. And I go to the selection, you know, just the same way here. I've got that little thing down here, you know, one selected, this is all records. Click on this, it would be the selected records. I can sort of see what I know about each road. You know, I know its name, I know what we should call it, I know its type, I know the speed limit, I have this interesting thing about whether it's one way, I know sort of the uh, the lanes, I know sort of the, the, the two from elevation, although it's kind of been messed up in this data set a bit, so um, not something we're going to focus on here, but we may work with that on a more advanced topic on this a little later in the semester. And more importantly, when I come all the way to the end, I also know its length. Right, so I know how long it is, I know how fast I can go on it, I know if I'm allowed to drive sort of one way or not. And that would be duplicated for every one of the 15,000 road segments. So we can use that information, right, how long a road is, how fast you can move on it, which direction can you drive on it, how many lanes, to program rules. Such that if I'm starting like at this dot up here, and I want to get to this dot down here, I would figure out which roads I should take to create the shortest route, or maybe which road should I take that is the fastest, right? That's what we're building here with network data sets. It's this concept of cost. What does it cost to travel on a road network? And we often think of the concept of cost in terms of distance or time, and that is perfectly fine if that is all you take away from these lessons, because that is 95% of how you're gonna model a network. But cost can be other things as well, right? It could be the cost of calories burned, or the cost of wanting to avoid hills, or in a super abstract way that I'll show you later today, the cost of avoiding crime, right? Maybe I would rather have a little more distance if it meant I didn't have to pass through areas where there are sort of high pockets of crime. Or maybe I'd want to go a little bit longer if it meant I could bike through areas that have more green space. Right? This concept of what it costs to move through space can be practical, like time and distance, but can also be abstract. So, what do we do? 
Well, when we want to build the rules of the road in desktop, it begins in catalog. So make sure you have the folder open and navigate down to that select Memphis roads in catalog. Right click it and see you have this option to create a new network data set. So let's give it a name, maybe ND Desktop. All right, remind ourselves that this is our network data set that we've built in ArcGIS Desktop. Hit Next. Do you want to model turns? Uh, this is a more advanced topic than we'll get to in um, network data set or network analyst in this class. And, and this, is, I think, is a good point to mention that I'm going to teach you some fairly advanced topics in today's lesson and then in sort of a subsequent lesson later in the semester when we, we sort of dive into some more advanced versions of, of earlier skills we learned. But I won't be able to teach you everything because network analytics is super dense and super detailed. And so I'm happy to connect you all with resources uh, to help broaden the, the knowledge a bit after this. Um, but turns is one of those examples. You may actually have a turns data set that tells you, you know, this is the additional time or, you know, distance or whatever you should add when turning left versus turning right. But for now, we'll just have sort of a global turns data set, um, you know, which, which sort of does that, assumes it takes a little longer to turn left than it does to sort of turn right. Again, another concept here, connectivity, that we will learn in a future lesson. Um, I have to decide whether it's the best to do it right after this or whether we're going to have sort of a lesson in late November, which I'll just call advanced topics. When we kind of come back to things we learned throughout the semester and review more advanced applications of them. But connectivity, which you do not need to follow me. I will just click it and see that all I have here is select roads. Well, when we learn connectivity, we'll actually have something say roads, and then maybe it'll say transit lines, and then it'll say transit stops, and it'll say bike lanes. Connectivity is just what you would use when you want to build what's called a multimodal data set, right? A data set that has different types of transportation that connect to one another. And, you know, public transit's a good way to think about this, right? I mean, if I'm going to walk to the Broad Street line, there's only certain places I can get to it. I enter those from the roads at a point. I walk underground and then I get on the subway. I can only ride the subway in one direction to certain points. And then I have to come up from those points to get back onto the road network. That's multimodal. Um, so definitely too advanced for us now because we don't even know how to build a, a sort of single mode uh, network data set. But I want you to know it's here because it will be one of those advanced topics we explore before the semester is out. Uh, another one that I want you to, even though it's going to try to default to say elevation fields, let's keep it at none here. Uh, this is, again, a, just a piece of data I don't have appropriately in the Memphis data set. But what I'll try to do is for a future sort of lesson or practical assignment, get a piece of data that has this. All this means is that is there a field that controls um, elevation, meaning that if two roads look like they connect with each other but they have different elevations, they won't actually sort of connect, um, which is absolutely useful for modeling bridges and stuff. Um, but, you know, again, the way our data set is structured is that if you were to click on a bridge, you would see the whole segment. It wouldn't sort of show you the node anyway. So let's pause on this and come back again when I have data that is a little bit better to allow us to do this. But for now, just hit none. And that'll bring you here, right? Now, this is an example of ArcGIS trying to be your friend. It's trying to say, hey, I saw some values in your data, and I thought to myself, you know, why don't I be a good pal and, and, and sort of uh, automatically populate the information for you. And, you know, you're so trusting of ArcGIS that, you know, if I weren't here to tell you not to, you'd probably be like, fuck it, yeah, let's click next. Sorry, I didn't mean to curse there. Screw it. Let's click next and let's keep going. Uh, but that would be wrong. Uh, certain things that are created here, like minutes and like cost and road class, aren't going to give you what you think. You know, ArcGIS thought it was doing you a favor, uh, but it's actually just faultily reading the data. And we'll understand sort of why that's the case in, um, in a second. You know, but for now, what I want you to do is just sort of pause on this video. Uh, you'll pick right up on the next one with this exact same screen. 
and we'll start walking through what these are. These are called the evaluators, and the evaluators here are what allow us to control things like how fast can I move on a road? How much distance does it take to be on this road? You know, am I allowed on this road or is it sort of prohibited? This is where the rules of the road are defined using the attributes of each road segment. So we'll pick up in just a second right here.